Hello, dear students. Welcome to the business studies classes. So we are in the we are there in the second session of chapter number five, organizing. So today we are going to cover the topic called organization structure. Now, what do you mean by organizing structure? The organization structure can be defined as the framework, the framework within which the managerial and the operating tasks are to be performed. It specifies the relationship between the people, work and resources. So framework, who has to work under who? This is what the framework, who has to report to who? Who has to be given the authority? This is what the framework, okay? And the, uh, within which the managerial and operating tasks, the work of a manager and the operational tasks, the subordinates, how to perform their activities. It specifies the relationship between the work, people, work, resources. So whatever that I told, men, material, money. So whatever the resources the company is having has to be effectively used. There are two types of organization structure. That is, one, the functional structure, and the second one, division structure. Before going to the particular topic, I'm going to dis give. Uh, I'm going to uh, uh, discuss one topic, uh, which is given as an example. That is, uh, I'm running one tourist agency. Okay, in the tourist agency, the work is booking of the ticket. I'll recruit four employees: A, B, C, D. Now. For A, I'll be giving the task of booking the train ticket. For B, I'm giving the task of booking bus ticket. For C, I'll be giving the task of uh, booking the flight ticket. And the D will be looking after all the online payment system. So what happens if I give them the proper task? Okay, whenever I say book train ticket, immediately A come forward and ask from where to where he has to book the ticket and he starts booking the tickets. So at that time, there will not be any confusion. There will not be any duplication of work, overlapping of work. So clearly states that who has to work and what kind of work they have to do it. So all the resources I am doing, I am uh, utilizing effectively. So that is what one example for the organizational structure. So let us discuss uh, two types of organizing structure that is functional structure and divisional structure. So in the organization structure, there are two types of organization structure. One it is functional, another one it is division. Functional structure of an organization, that means grouping of jobs which, having, which is having similar nature. One kind of job, which will be grouped together. Like human resource will be de uh, departmentalized or marketing one particular department. Research, depa research and development will be grouped together as one department, which performs one particular kind of uh, jobs. It is grouped together. In human resources, what kind of uh, work they are having? So, in a human resource department, if a company is having a large scale business, they will be looking after the employee selection, the employee's training, remuneration of an employee, and which are the department uh, uh, needed uh, number of employees to their particular department. So this task is performed by human resource department. So that is why it is on the basis of jobs and it is grouped together. Okay. So this is what the structure, okay. This is what the structure of the functional. Okay, this is what the structure, and uh, this is this is a chart showing the functional structure of an organization. Managing director, under the managing director, director, human resource department, 
marketing department, research and de development department, purchasing department. Research and development department will look after the product innovation. What are the new products they can launch? Purchasing department, the production, uh, uh, usually they needs purchasing of various materials to the uh, products. So they will look after. So it is not only fixed, only these four kind of uh, department a company should. A company is having a different number of department. If the large scale industries, they have a uh, very good organized structure, it is what divided according to the nature of the work, according to the nature of the work, it is divided. Okay? Let us uh, go with the advantages. So, what advantages a company is having if a, a functional structure is uh, there in the organization? The first advantage is specialization. One particular work is done by one particular uh, uh, manager repeated number of times. I told in the last class, if a, one particular person, if he does the same work again and again, he will be specialized in, in that particular field. He gains a lot of knowledge. He gains a lot of techniques, skills. After 10 years, he does that particular job in uh, when it was at the beginning, it took around five to five, uh, six hours to complete one particular job. He takes within a one hour and complete the particular job. Why? Because the specialization, task to perform a particular job uh, after doing the work so many number of times. So, it, that is one particular advantage that is specialization because of the functional structure. Next, it promotes control and coordination. So, it is very easy to manage. MD can control all the department because it goes under him and coordinate with the different departments. MD will have a uh, direct control, or control and he can manage it very well efficiently. Okay? That is what one, one of the advantages. The third point, the fun functional structure minimize the duplication of work because here it is all the works are divided into different department. So, here human resource uh, uh, department only concentrate on the work of recruiting the employees, selecting the employees, training the employees and uh, giving them the salary to the employees. They only concentrate on that. They are uh, not thinking about the production function. So, at that time, there is no duplication, there is no overlapping of work because they concentrate on that. At the same time, marketing department thinks on their uh, marketing strategy, how they can increase the sales, what are the various techniques we can develop to increase the scale, sales. So, on the particular uh, department, they concentrate on their uh, what uh, their particular department. So, they do not think about the our other departments are doing. So, at that time, the duplication and the overlapping of work can be minimized. And the next point is training of employees is easier. Why? Because when you recruit one particular employee, you recruit on the basis of his skill, his skill and uh, his educational qualification. For example, in HR department, a candidate will be recruited if he completed MBA. That is MBA in uh, the specialization HR, human resources. Why? Because they knows how, uh, what are the various law related to employees, how the salary will be given, or what are the uh, what, uh, various recruitment policies. So, what are the compensation is provided if a employee is met with an accident? So, these are the things knows uh, only by the HR department uh, who knows who has studied uh, MBA uh, post graduation. So, when if you recruit the employees on the basis of his educational skill, it is very easy for a, a company to train them because they does know how to do. Same in the accounts field. If an accountant has to be recruited, uh, the accountant 
uh, you are going to recruit with the BCom graduate or MCom graduates. So, these are the advantages of functional structure. Let us discuss the disadvantages of the functional structure. The first point is less emphasis on overall enterprise objective. Of course, see each department has their own objective which has been set. Like the marketing uh, department, they have set the objectives like selling the uh, what uh, in uh, what in the automobile industry selling 50 cars 100 cars they set their own task uh, they set, set their own objective at the same time organizing uh, the company also uh, has set their objective by achieving 500 crores of profit or 1000 crores of profit so when if do, if it does not matches the uh, department and the organize uh, organization goals it is very difficult to manage. So, that is why it less emphasis on the overall objects. Usually, they only see, only concentrate on their particular objective uh, the, which is set by their department. They do not concentrate on the entire company's uh, objective. So, there, that is why there it is lacking. And the second one, it leads to problems in coordination. I will explain both the points together. It leads to problems in the uh, co coordination between the department and conflicts of interest may arise in the different department. So, conflict of interest. For example, if a human resource em uh, employee, uh, the manager does not uh, have a good uh, relation with the marketing department, there will be a conflict between the employee, uh, between the different department. Whenever, for example, uh, the marketing uh, what uh, manager requires uh, five sales representative. Now, there is a conflict between the HR manager and the marketing department and uh, marketing department needs an employee, uh, needs employee uh, for his department. Now, if he does not transfer the information here, uh, he will be lacking in uh, selling the products. So, that is what he says, he directly contact to MD and MD has to contact uh, HR manager. It is a huge process. So, it ha what uh, because of the conflicts, it goes to MD, MD again. If there is no conflict, they can directly contact. So, functional uh, structure uh, what leads to, it is uh, le uh, what uh, uh, leads to conflict, leads to problem in the coordination and conflict of interest may arise between the department. And the last point it is, it leads to inflexibility. So, uh, whenever if the company wants to take, uh, whenever they want to take the decision, MD has to call all the department heads and they have to sit together and take the decision. Then uh, all the decision has to be transferred to their department. It is a huge process and it, it, uh, uh, what, uh, it, is a, uh, it leads to inflexibility of operation. So, these are the advantages and disadvantages of a functional structure of an organization. So, the next, the second structure that is divisional structure of an organization. Now, what is this divisional structure of an organization? A company produces more than one category of product. That means, if a company produces more number of product, different categories of product. For example, Reliance company, they, they are producing different types of product. They are into the electronic field, that is Reliance trend. They are into the uh, oil and uh, gas and they also have the, uh, they are into the telecom industry, that is Reliance Geo. And uh, food, Reliance food prints. So, these are the different products. Even Tata also, they are uh, producing the steels, they are into the trucks, uh, producing trucks, uh, bus, all those and also Tata Salt and uh, uh, Tata Consultancy, all those uh, TCS, Tata Consultancy Services. Again, Aditya, the Aditya Birla, they are into the uh, what uh, uh, 
uh, their having the telecom industry idea and uh, they are uh, they're, uh, having they are producing the cements and they have different amul if you take amul they are producing different types of products so it is divided okay on the base of product which has uh, if the company is producing different types of products let me give uh, 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 this is what the structure okay this is what the organi uh, divisional structure of an organization there will be a managing director under the managing director the departmentalization is done on the base of the product produce different kinds of kinds of product produce one it is cosmetics if it is garments footwear skin care so if they have different any other products uh, they are manufacturing they can add on so under the cosmetic you will see the functional structure that is human resource marketing research and development and purchasing so each product has this functional structure so md under md different types of product under that you will get the you will see the function structure that is hr marketing research and development and purchasing so this is the chart showing the division structure of an organization so it is divided if the company produces more than one category of product what does happen if they produce more than one uh, type of product and it comes under division structure let us uh, go with the exam uh, advantages okay advantages of division structure a product specialization so here it comes the product specialization Product, uh, product specialization it helps in the department sorry development of varied skills in a divisional heads for a higher position so uh, whenever if it is divided into the product now under the cosmetic again it is divided subdivided so the departments are divided on the base of product manufacture so the product specialization whenever the company want to update one more uh, they want to introduce one more product so under this uh, particular uh, department the uh, employees are ready to take their higher position because they gained a lot of uh, what uh, experience they, under this uh, hr manager can promote and he can start uh, what if there is any new uh, what uh, products which is which has uh, introduced by the company he can promote into the higher position and he can start uh, work as a manager in one more so whenever the situation comes they can go for the higher position it helps in the fixation of responsibility that is revenue and cost so from which particular product a company is getting more profit and which is having uh, which which companies which particular product we are suffering with the loss so it is very easy to identify the uh, uh, what uh, cost and the revenue from where they are getting very much uh, uh, what a uh, good revenue uh, in the particular product or which is too much expensive the particular department which are too much expensive so in the later period you can start uh, you can stop that particular department and start uh, what uh, investing on new product uh, new products which uh, they can update so that's why uh, it is very easy to identify which particular department are getting more revenue and which getting uh, more of cost expense then flexibility and initiate why it is flexibility see each department has given the independent rights on the taking of of decision making time whenever the decision making time you can cosmetic department they uh, call the meeting and uh, easy to uh, what uh, discuss whatever the decision has to be taken it can be done in their particular field in the cosmetic field and directly start applying that particular decision so that's why it has a very much flexibility and initiate it is very flexibility this uh, uh, division structure are very much flexible and initial next one it facilitates growth and expansion okay it facilitates growth and expansion whenever uh, if company is growing into the further field if the they want to expand 
uh, their branches all over the world or all over the world or uh, throughout the India. So it is very easy because they know how the organizing structure can be redrafted and how the uh, work will be given, how the authority will be uh, given to different uh, uh, persons in the organization, different employees in the organization. So that is why it facilitates growth and uh, expansion whenever situation comes. So these are the advantages of divisional structure. Let us discuss the disadvantages of divisional structure. The first point is conflict between the divisions, the conflict between the division. If there is, there, there will be a chances of a, co a conflict between two departments, two divisions. Why? Because if MD gives more of the funds to cosmetics, less of the funds to the garments, uh, it creates the conflict between different divisions. Whenever if we, uh, if cosmetics gets more funds, more funds, but garment uh, sector is not getting funds. So uh, cosmetics will be uh, what able to uh, get more profits because of the more funds. So this because of the allocation of funds to the different divisions arises of conflicts between the divisions. Next one, it may lead to increase in the cost, unnecessary diversification in the product. Okay? If there is no requirement of introducing the new product, it uh, arises here, yeah, it may lead to increase in the cost because unnecessary division of product. Simply you create an, another product and you simply create one more uh, division which is of noise and it creates a lot of cost. This uh, it becomes uh, expensive whenever there is unnecessary introduction of a uh, products. And the last one, the manage. See, each heads are uh, uh, comes under the control of MD. Okay, each heads will come under the control of MD. So MD has a lot of power. Now that the power which uh, MD is having, if he uses for the personal benefit, if he does not go with the organizational benefit, then the conflict arises. If he uses uh, whatever the power for his personal benefits, uh, for example, he may be good with the uh, what footwear department and he gives more and more funds. So at that time what happened? The conflict arises. Because of the conflict, entire organization comes down. Okay? So MD has to utilize his whatever the power, not uh, for, the, for the his benefit, but for the organization. So there are chances okay, in the divisional heads, in the divisional uh, structure, there are chances MD can use his power for his personal uh, what uh, purpose and it can be uh, what uh, very dangerous for entire organization so these are the advantages and disadvantages of the divisional structure